G'day folks and welcome to an old Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update for the nation today 7th of January 2015. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update is sponsored by our major sponsor Campbell Scientific Australia when measurements matter. A lot to get through today folks because there's a lot of excitement and interest in the Australian tropics and the first area of interest is the Western Australian region. We have a tropical low in the Kimberley deepening, getting stronger, expecting to dump flooding type rainfalls over the North Kimberley over the next couple of days and then those flooding rainfalls will actually move into Central Australia, possibly even into South Australia uh, and certainly create havoc in those states as well. But over to the east and we have a new tropical low expected to develop near the peninsula coastline and that tropical low there has been a lot of interesting guidance developments today and we'll go into some of those. We won't go into them in detail, that's more for the subscriber updates, but for our national update we'll go into a couple of the variable parameters that are in play with that system. And let me just say things are getting very very interesting for the Queensland coast. All right, without further ado, let's talk about WA. We have a ton of warnings on offer here for WA for this event, and we have a tropical low located between Derby and Fitzroy Crossing, and it's not moving anywhere, and it's just sitting there, and it's just getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And so what we're going to see is very heavy rainfall, possibly some flooding rainfalls developing overnight tonight, and then as we get into Thursday, uh, we're going to see extreme rainfalls developing in the area. We're talking uh, falls of... 200 plus millimetres over 24 hours expected over the coastal region, possibly falls even in excess of that, depending on if an area of convergence sits over a particular spot for any length of time. In terms of cyclone development, the Bureau are not giving this a very high chance of developing because it's not expected to get offshore. Now, had it gone offshore, we would have seen almost certainly a cyclone, uh, but because it hasn't gone offshore, it's remained inland, and it, it's missing that prime energy source, which is the, that warm ocean water, and therefore the Bureau are saying there's a low percentage chance of it moving offshore. Now, let me just reiterate, if it does push offshore, uh, all bets are off. This is going to be a cyclone. But at this point in time, uh, the computer models are not showing us that happening, and therefore the probability of this system becoming a cyclone is low, and then eventually on Saturday very low because it moves away to the southeast. Wonderful radar image overlay here from the Bureau of Meteorology and Weather Zone for the overlay. We've got the uh, tropical low, very, very easy to spot here, located directly east of Broome, and Around about 200 kilometres to the east of Broome is the centre of the low, but look, really because it's a monsoon low, it doesn't really matter exactly where the centre is. You're not going to, in a monsoon low, you tend not to see the strongest activity in and around the centre. You actually see it in the areas that where, where the convergent banding is present. And so right now we have that western edge of the system, obviously uh, very active, and also we have these these rain bands pushing onto the coast in this westerly to southwesterly airstream. Now, this system, as I mentioned, is not expected to push offshore. We're expecting it to remain over land. We're expecting it to dump fairly heavy rainfall. Now, let's take a look at what the uh, computer model guidance together is showing in terms of rainfall. And overall, they're showing that the maximum rainfall potential of this system will be tomorrow, uh, and particularly on this Kimberley coastline between Broome and Columba Roo, we're looking at uh, certainly the chance there of over 200 millimetres falling in that 24-hour period, uh, and possibly, as I mentioned, uh, some really extreme rainfalls up here over that 24 hours. And continuing on into Friday morning to some of that really heavy stuff as well. But as I mentioned, tomorrow will be the peak of this event, tomorrow and into tomorrow night. The other thing to note is the tremendous amount of rainfall pushing southeastwards here along the trough line. And so over the next four days, you've got places like Alice Springs here, folks, who are, who are looking at 150, <laughs> 150 millimetres. How often does that happen for Alice over, over four days? Uh, so... The trough line is a really clear distinction between moist air to its east and dry air to its west. So, unfortunately, many places in the Pilbara and Gascoigne will miss out. But you know, the vast majority of Central Australia will get a bucketing from this particular system. Even getting into South Australia here, you're looking at 100 millimetres or more uh, possible from this particular system. So what happens is the low eventually starts to track to the southeast and along this trough line. Unfortunately for Queenslanders who are looking at this trough going, oh yes, here we go, unfortunately it's not coming towards us. It's actually going to dip down here to the south and weaken as we go. But what we're watching over in the eastern parts of the continent 
is this area here off the coast of the North Peninsula. So let's take a look at the Queenslanders. So what we're looking at right now is a monsoon trough that's located right up here in the far northern, uh, far northern coral sea. Now what's going to happen is along that trough line we're going to eventually see a tropical low develop. And if we fast forward the forecast through to possibly as early as tomorrow morning, we'll see that low form just off the coast here of, northern, of the northern peninsula in the far northwestern coral sea. Now if we track this low over the coming few days, and we'll see that it adopts a southeast pattern, but very, very slowly. It almost sort of sits in place here and starts to deepen. And we see the system then begin to track out here to the east. And then eventually a little bit of byplay here between two tropical lows uh, located in the Coral Sea. One to the south of the Solomons, one to the south of PNG. And what eventually happens, though, is we get a big change in the steering flow. And this change in the steering flow happens around about Sunday. And what will happen is that this system out here in the Solomons is expected to continue to push southeastwards. This system in the Coral Sea is actually expected to stall and then start to push back towards the coast. Now, there is a lot of model variability in this, so don't take this as gospel. But what we're starting to see at the moment in the computer model guidance is a change in the steering flow. Now, what we have in this is a 300 hectopascal level. We have an upper level trough, and an upper level trough is going to try and push a system out here to the southeast. It's a fairly strong upper level trough, don't get me wrong. But what we have over Queensland later this week and into this weekend and into even early next week is the development of an upper level ridge and an upper level high pressure system. Now, what this will do is it'll stabilize Queensland, so all the rain goes away. Uh, but what we will see in its wake is a, is a push from the upper level winds, or a change in the upper level winds, I should say, to result in a push in a westerly direction of anything that is found in the western or northern coral sea. Now, if it, this is found in the eastern coral sea, so let's say it pushes east really, really quickly, it's gone. We've got no claim on this whatsoever. It's going to push away to the southeast, to the South Pacific. If, however, the system lies uh, just west of that, and so in the western half of the coral sea, we certainly have a claim on it as it as it starts to intensify with depth we do see the potential for the system to track back towards the Queensland coast and anywhere along the Queensland coast from Cooktown south to Rocky uh, would be on alert for this system if it starts to do that. So what we see on the computer model guidance by Sunday afternoon and evening is that the system has developed into a tropical cyclone or very, very close to a tropical cyclone and then starts to track very slowly back towards the coast. The computer model here from the Euro keeps the system just offshore of the Queensland coast and keeps it fairly weak. So it keeps it here just to the east of uh, Cairns to Townsville. Now the alternate scenario of course is the one I just mentioned that the system pushes too far to the east and the GFS low resolution model has that exact same thing happening. So we see the tropical low located way out here to the east and will then continue to push out here in a southeasterly direction away from Queensland. So that is the alternate scenario and so I've given you the two different scenarios here. The other thing that the GFS, the low resolution GFS model does, if we backtrack a little bit, is it actually forms the tropical low off the coast and pushes the tropical low onto the Queensland coast as well. So it forms two different lows, this one and this one. This one pushes on the coast around Cooktown but remains reasonably weak, so uh, we're talking more around the uh, tropical low of about a thousand hectopascals or so, uh, and then develops a tropical cyclone out here, but also develops a new low along the monsoon trough and pushes it southeast. So folks, it's very complex pattern. And it's interesting to see the difference between the GFS low resolution, which I've shown you here, and the GFS high resolution, which I'll show you in a second. So here is the GFS high resolution model. So this one uses a, uh, a vertical, or sorry, a horizontal resolution that's much higher than the current one that we're using. Now this isn't available to the public just yet. Uh, it will be shortly. Uh, but Brisbane Storm Chasers have given us access to this, particular, to this particular model, and we thank them for that. And what we have here is the tropical low developing, just like every other model does, just off the Queensland coast here, off the uh, North Peninsula. But we see it probably developing a little bit faster than the other computer models show. 
and therefore it has more chance of hitting the coastline because that upper level ridge builds and unless the system is strong the upper level ridge won't be able to take hold of it so the GFS model has this particular low making landfall around Cairns on Sunday morning and What's interesting about the GFS high resolution model is it then brings in and trains in another tropical cyclone, uh, sorry, not another tropical cyclone, a tropical cyclone in from the northeast. And if we continue to track through Monday, we start to see the development of the cyclone uh, out here in the northeast Coral Sea. And if we go to Tuesday, we have the cyclone pushing straight towards the Q coast. By Wednesday, it's located off the Queensland coast, fairly significant system, and then by Thursday makes landfall. Now, I do caution that using the GFS this far out, even in the high resolution version, uh, is quite uh, fraught with danger. But the fundamental steering flow, at least, is what we're looking for, and the fundamental steering flow is fairly correct on both computer models, the Euro and the GFS, and on both the GFS high res and the GFS low res. So we're led to believe, I think, at this early point in time that while we're not expecting a massive cyclone to hit the Queensland coast, what we are expecting is that this low is not a done deal. It's not going to push away to the east as easily as we might have thought, say, 24 to 48 hours ago. So it's a very interesting scenario, folks, and one that will be fascinated to watch play out. So that's all we got time for today, and if you want to learn more about the Queensland system, uh, watch tomorrow's subscriber update. For those of you that are OCC subscribers, head to your webpage, oldcyclonechasers.com.au, and click the login button, and check out your subscriber update there. Now, I'm sure that tomorrow's subscriber update will be very interesting for those of you that are subscribers. For those of you in the general public, uh, we will have another update, a national update for you on Friday. Thanks for watching, folks, and we'll talk again Friday.